So the key theme that I'm getting from both of you is that, okay, we are in this environment where investors have to get readjusted to these higher yielding types of, of, of backdrop. So Steve, I want to bring you into this conversation because you cover the construction sector extensively. So arguably, if we are in a higher rates regime, that will have significant implications for the U.S. housing market, for real estate more broadly. You have excellent high frequency data, I know at Dodge. How are you kind of seeing this cyclical versus secular trend play out, particularly in U.S. construction activity? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I do appreciate your focus on real tangible assets because that's what we create. <laughs> um, the construction industry is a, reached a trillion dollars last year here in the U.S. and it, we're looking at it continuing at that level and going beyond. But much like we heard from the folks on the healthcare panel, it is made up of thousands of micro markets, both geographically, it's a very local business, um, and also by project types, of which we track probably 30 different ones. And we track at Dodge, we track every project north of a million dollars in North America. As soon as we can learn about it, when it's probably been awarded to an architect, all the way through um, its completion. And so we're, we have been doing this for decades. So we have lots of, of data, and you can roll all that up and say, yeah, construction this year starts will be down 5%. Next year, they'll be down 6%. But every single line item is its own unique story mm -hmm. in this business. Um, obviously, higher rates and tighter lending, right? I've still got my Silicon Valley Bank uh, credit card here in my wallet <laughs> as, a, as a keepsake. <laughs> right? um, uh, clearly, that has impacted the commercial markets, the privately driven markets, the investor-driven uh, markets. You look at what's happened in residential. Um, but at the end of the day, we're not a product business, right? We're a service business in that way. We only serve what it is that people actually need, what governments actually need, right? We create these assets that are needed. Um, and so things like that kind of rent to buy consideration that you make in any residential decision, right? That's where it all boils down to at the end of the day. So, so many other factors come into play because the human being is actually, ends up being a major factor in the construction industry. Um, most of the you know, residential, hotel, office, retail, they're all going to be weaker, right? Um, the public markets, though, have probably, in terms of that construction starts numbers, offset that one for one because so much uh, federal money has come into so many of those kinds of markets. We consider, at this point, manufacturing to be kind of a quasi-public market now because of all the government money that came in uh, when we tracked, say, the last 15 or 20 years and the amount of manufacturing spend there was last year, 300% increase, right? Um, it'll soften a little bit in the next couple of years, but still, that money is very real. And the onshoring, right, which is, I think, a positive trend for us in terms of manufacturing. Um, and then the interesting things that you begin to see happen around, you know, the big battery plants, right, in Georgia, things like that. Now they're starting to do huge housing developments around those, right? All these parts and pieces, they work on different streams and they influence each other in, in interesting ways. Um, I, I think ultimately the, um, the structural aspects of it are impacted by things like the demographics. As I say, we build for people there are just going to be fewer people in the United States, right? So that demand will change over time. Um, we're seeing a really interesting trend. Um, we are all aware of the hollowing out of cities, but we're seeing an actual increase in rural, not suburban, but rural projects uh, going on. And you hear a lot about the doom loop in cities. I don't think New York experiences it to the same degree because we have so much integrated residential, but the places like the Minneapolis's and the St. Louis's who lost that and never replaced it um, are really suffering that. And so now what happens to office space? But within office space, there's data centers, which are going through the absolute roof. And some of those are in those more rural locations. So, um, and what will remote officing do to the idea of what the office building is? The office building has been as much as a third of the entire commercial market. Right? That's, that, as a core office product, is definitely going to cycle. But again, not necessarily due to the typical cycles as much as all the other things going on in the economy that tend to drive that. Um, and then lastly, the construction industry, much like other industries, 
faces a very severe labor shortage right now. Um, we finished a survey last year of trade contractors. And God bless all the general contractors, but they don't build a dang thing. It's the trade contractors who are at the work face building it. We asked the question among the five biggest trades, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, steel, and concrete, how many of your existing staff do you think are likely to retire in the next five years? And what's fun about doing research like this is you never know what the answer is going to be. I thought maybe it would be eight, maybe 10, maybe 12 if it was really dangerous. 32% of the entire construction industry are going to be retiring in the next five years. And it's worse for the bigger companies who have the nice 401k plans and things of that nature, right? People are taking advantage of those things. And we don't have enough people coming in. So when we ask people, okay, what are you doing about that? Two things, neither of which are very good. One of which is we're raising our prices, which is an inflationary push, of course. The other is we're just turning down work, which means, and we're seeing that projects are taking longer to start and longer to start and longer to start. That's just gonna exacerbate that situation. So again, construction, you can talk about it as a whole, but oh, there's thousands of, of stories in the naked city, which makes it a fascinating industry.